The capital city of the nation's seventh most populated state, Columbus is one of the most important and influential cities in the Midwest. I've been to Columbus several times over the past three years, and I think it's a great city. In this series, I briefly hit on a city's history, population, skyline, as well as a few things that make it unique. Now let's meet Columbus. I always like to start by exploring how a city wound up being where it is today. Located in central Ohio at the confluence of the Scioto and Olentangy rivers, the Columbus area was originally inhabited by the mound builders thousands of years ago. You can still see some of the mounds near the city today. The first European settlement in the area was Franklinton, which was established in 1797. As Ohio started growing, it was determined that the capital should be moved to the center of the state. Some residents of Franklinton lobbied for the capital to be moved across the Scioto River from them by offering their land to the state, which worked, and the capital was moved to the newly established town of Columbus in 1816. The capital building ended up being built on the very land that was donated by those Franklinton residents, which I'll talk more about in a minute. Over the past two centuries, Columbus has grown to have a population of around 900,000 people, making it the third largest state capital in the whole country. To my surprise, it's actually the largest city in the state and 14th largest city in the country just behind Fort Worth, Texas and just ahead of Charlotte, North Carolina. If you've watched my other videos, you'll know that I think that metro population is more indicative of a city's true size. Columbus has a metro population of about 2,150,000, making it the 32nd largest metro in the country. When measuring for metro population, Columbus is the second largest Ohio city behind Cincinnati, but it's the largest metro entirely in Ohio since Cincinnati is on the border of Kentucky. Some of the most recognizable companies headquartered in the Columbus metro include Nationwide, Big Lots, Wendy's, and Abercrombie & Fitch. Columbus has one of the highest concentrations of higher education in the nation, with around 50 colleges and universities within the metro, including the third largest university in the country, The Ohio State University. Call me shallow, but when it comes to cities, I think appearances matter, which is why evaluating a city's skyline is my favorite part of making these videos. Columbus's skyline is just okay to me. It has a relatively large skyline with nine of the tallest 20 buildings in the state, but they don't come together in a way that's very visually appealing. I realize it's not scientific, but I conducted a poll last week with over 700 participants and only 13% thought that the Columbus skyline was better than Cleveland and Cincinnati's. If you took the average height of the tallest five buildings in the skyline, it would be ranked as the 24th tallest in the country, just behind Tulsa and just ahead of Oklahoma City. The tallest building in the city is the Rhodes State Office Tower at 624 feet. My favorite looking building in the city, and by a wide margin, is the second tallest building, the Levesque Tower, which was built in 1927. I'm a sucker for Art Deco skyscrapers, so naturally I really appreciate the look of this building. Although Columbus doesn't have an NFL team like the other two big sea cities in Ohio, it is home to what is probably Ohio's favorite football team, the Ohio State Buckeyes. As I mentioned earlier, the Ohio State University is the third largest university in the country with a student body population north of 61,000. And the Buckeye football stadium, nicknamed the Horseshoe, can easily fit them all on a Saturday. The massive Ohio Stadium seats over 100,000 people and is the third largest sports stadium in the country and the seventh largest in the whole world. On the original parcel of land donated to the state sits the capital of Ohio, the Ohio State House. Unlike many other state capitol buildings, it wasn't patterned after the nation's capital in DC. It has a Greek revivalist architectural style and rather than having a dome, it's topped with a flat cupola. It's one of only 17 state capitol buildings to be considered a national historic landmark because of its unique architecture. Columbus has what is considered to be the best science museum in the whole country. The COSI, short for Center of Science and Industry, has been awarded by USA Today as the best science museum in the nation in each of the past three years. Some of its most popular exhibits include its dinosaur gallery, its submarine, and rat basketball. It also has the largest educational outreach program of any science museum in the country. 
In downtown Columbus is one of the most unique garden parks that I'm aware of. It's called Topiary Park, and it's the only park in the country based entirely on a painting. Anyone who's taken a humanities class will recognize the post-impressionist painting, A Sunday Afternoon on the Island of Le Grand Jatte. And the garden park recreates that painting in Topiary with 54 people, eight boats, and several animals. It's been referred to as a landscape of a painting of a landscape. Many of the early immigrants to Columbus were German, and they made up about a third of the city's population during the 1800s. Today, that heritage is evident when you visit the German village. It's a historic community filled with German restaurants, shops, gardens, and brick streets. One of my closest friends is from Columbus, and she describes it as a place where you can just step back into time. The neighborhood has been nationally recognized as a model for historical preservation. One of the nicknames for Columbus is Arch City. This is due to it erecting 17 arches in 1888 that were all lit with gas lights to welcome visitors to a centennial celebration of the creation of the Northwest Territory. The original arches are now gone, but 20 years ago they reconstructed the arches with steel in the short North Arts District. The last unique thing about Columbus that I'll bring up is the National Veterans Memorial and Museum, which was built in 2018. This is the National Museum dedicated to veterans of the armed forces. Unlike other war museums that focus on the conflicts, this museum focuses on the personal stories of the veterans. I love the idea of the museum, and I think that the building's design is beautiful. Well, that wraps up my video about Columbus. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and check out some of my other videos about cities. Thanks for watching.